Hey, what is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. It's been said that if you have a commercial driver's license in the US, you will never be out of a job. Well, that is unless you don't want a job. But in this age and time, truer words have never been spoken. Whether it's driving a semi-truck hauling freight, a school bus hauling students, a transit bus hauling local commuters, or a motor coach hauling travelers, the US today is experiencing a severe CDL driver shortage. Although the shortage of commercial drivers is nothing new to the industry, it's become more severe since the COVID pandemic, especially for bus operators. Today, we're gonna to take a look at why there's such a CDL driver shortage, specifically in the motor coach industry, as well as what it takes to become a motor coach operator. As the US slowly recovers from the COVID pandemic, the motor coach, school bus, and city transit agencies are having a hard time recovering their staff. Schools remain closed, sticking to virtual classrooms, not because of COVID anymore, but more because of the lack of school bus drivers. According to a news article from Education Week released on May 19th of 2021, Milwaukee Public Schools canceled 160 bus routes in April because there simply were not enough bus drivers. In the city of Champaign and Urbana, Illinois, which is where I live, the local news agency News Gazette reported on May 22nd, 2021, that the Mass Transit Service that operates in the area known as MTD, or Mass Transit District, has temporarily reduced services because of a lack of bus drivers. Anyway, without putting too fine a point on it, the bus industry has never experienced such a severe case of commercial driver shortage as it's seeing now. Now, in the process of making this video, I did a lot of digging around and read a lot of news articles to see if anyone actually had the answer to what is causing the driver shortage in the bus industry. Now, keep in mind that it's not just the bus industry that is suffering from this deficit. According to Redwood Logistics, which is a transportation management group out of Chicago, Illinois, the other half of the commercial driver industry, which is trucking, is also feeling the deficit and has been for decades. Now, even though today we're gonna focus on the commercial driver shortage on the motor coach side of things, I can't really go into it without mentioning the trucking side because it's kind of part of the cause. You see, one of the overall causes of the shortage of motor coach operators is because everyone in the transportation industry, whether it be trucking, city transit, school bus, and motor coach, is competing over each other and hiring CDL drivers. When the COVID pandemic hit, people stopped traveling, which means there was no longer a need for buses, which meant a lot of bus drivers were laid off and were without work. But the one thing that skyrocketed during the pandemic was the need for trucking and freight hauling. Retail stores and online shopping like Amazon saw record increases in demand for products because well, everyone was at home stocking up and preparing for the worst. So if you put yourself in the shoes of an experienced motor coach operator, someone who's made a living driving large commercial vehicles, transporting passengers, and all of a sudden a global pandemic causes them to lose their jobs, it's unlikely that someone in that position is gonna to wanna to start over in an entirely new field or trade skill. Although some have used this opportunity to go back to school and completely change their life career. Starting today, I'm one of the station's diagnostic and repair technicians junior grade most motor coach operators became truckers so that they could continue to pay the bills without spending time and money going back to school or training for an entirely new trade skill you see trucking companies saw the opportunity during the pandemic to snatch up all the cdl drivers coming from the destroyed motor coach and bus industries as well as all of those who had never been behind the wheel of a large commercial vehicle before who were also out of a job during the pandemic. According to a news article from CNN Business News Online released on May 29th of 2021, trucking companies have been competing with each other, offering large pay hikes to new incoming drivers. This, however, caused several negative effects, not only for the motor coach companies, but for trucking companies as well. What CNN Business wrote in their article was that because of the huge pay hikes, trucking companies were paying their drivers, Many of the drivers coming on board to drive trucks were using their large paychecks to actually cut down on their driving time and time on the road so that they could be home more. Also, because trucking companies are trying to outpay each other, their newly hired drivers would simply not stick around long. More commercial drivers were hopping from one giant sign-on bonus to another. You're quitting? Effective immediately. And with all this going on, as motor coach companies started to see passengers return for their travel needs, 
many of their drivers had already made new career homes for themselves in the trucking industry. Now, despite all the bus drivers going to drive trucks, many motor coach operators that have gone to the trucking side have expressed a desire to return to being behind the wheel of a coach bus again. Now, the ones that I personally know from the company I work for have stated that the grass isn't greener on the other side. When it comes to pay, there's no doubt that most motor coach companies simply can't compete with what most trucking companies are offering. I mean, let's face it, transporting goods is a necessity and critical for our country to run, which means trucking companies can charge a higher price for the service of shipping goods and people will still pay. But as far as taking people on field trips and tours, well, that's a luxury and one that people can do without or find other means if the price is too high. But those who have returned to the motor coach world after leaving for more lucrative trucking jobs have said that the days on end of being isolated by yourself in the cab of a truck, not having a nice hotel to go to, but showering in public truck stop showers and sleeping in your trucks for days on end. Also the constant pressure to get to the next delivery and pickup site. According to some of these drivers who have actually done both and can actually compare the two different driving jobs, say that the quality of life in trucking is not worth the extra money. Now keep in mind that these are the opinions of several individuals that I have personally spoken to. Now, some of you may be asking right now, well, James, why don't they just come back to the motor coach side then? Problem solved. Well, the fact of the matter is most of them still have nothing to come back to in the motor coach side. The motor coach industry remains a destroyed industry trying desperately to rebuild after the pandemic. It's an industry composed of mostly mom and pop operations, small businesses that don't have the deep pockets to reach into even before the pandemic started. And though some coach companies are bouncing back with passengers booking trips, it's not enough to guarantee a driver a steady supply of trips to pay their bills. I guess one would have to ask themselves, would I leave a job that I don't like but pays well to go back to a job I loved but could leave me without work for weeks at a time? With that said, I'm sure there are those who have gone to the trucking side and absolutely loved it over being a motor coach driver. In the end, it all depends on each individual's preferences and financial status. When it comes to driving coach buses, the job itself is not a very well-known occupation. To most people, a bus driver is just a bus driver without any consideration of how different the days are from driving charter groups on a coach bus, comparing that to driving routes on a city bus or a school bus. A lot of those who end up in the motor coach profession discover it by realizing the different role a motor coach plays after learning a bit more about the transportation industry by either becoming a city bus driver or school bus driver first. Either that or by word of mouth from another motor coach operator. I mean, let's face it, you don't hear many people in high school or going through college saying, I'm going to drive a motor coach when I graduate. Well, unless you're a bus nut, geek, or enthusiast like myself. But usually the long hours of driving, constantly being away from home, high level of responsibility, and mediocre pay kind of turn the younger crowd away and blinds them from all the fun and glamorous parts of the job itself. It takes someone with a very adventurous personality to enjoy being a coach bus operator. I did a video on what it's like to be a motor coach operator in the US a while back, which I'll post the link up here and down below if any of you are interested about what the job entails. But according to Zipia.com, as of May 2021, the average age of a motor coach operator in the US is 53.8 years old, with 69% being male and 25% being female. Some motor coach companies require drivers to already have their commercial driver's license along with all the endorsements prior to getting hired. The company I work for at Peoria Charter provides paid training for drivers wishing to become a motor coach operator but does not have a commercial driver's license. Before any of the training actually starts, the candidate is sent to get a Department of Transportation physical exam and drug screening to make sure that they're medically and physically fit to become a coach bus operator. Morning, gentlemen. I'm Dr. Carruthers. I'll be assisting uh, Dr. Monkison here. The curriculum usually involves four weeks of classroom and over the road training, as well as tutoring sessions for the candidate in order to get him or her ready to take their CDL test. In the US, or at least in the state of Illinois, to become a motor coach operator, one would need a Class B commercial driver's license, an air brake endorsement, passenger endorsement, 
and a charter bus endorsement, which involves a pretty extensive background check through an approved vendor from the state of Illinois. It's important to note that one must be 21 years or older to get a commercial driver's license. However, most motor coach carriers like Peria Charter require their drivers to be 25 years or older to apply usually because their insurance company policy requires it. But before one can begin the testing for all these requirements, one would have to have a clean MVR or motor vehicle report, which is a background check of an individual's driving history. First comes the written tests, which are usually taken at a computer terminal at the DMV or Department of Motor Vehicle Building. To prepare for the test, one can usually get a free study CDL book from the DMV, which I would highly suggest taking advantage of. The first test section is called the core knowledge, which consists of 50 questions, of which one would have to answer at least 40 of the questions correctly. Then there's the air brake section, which has 25 questions, of which a minimum of 20 has to be answered correctly. Finally, there's the passenger permit test that has 20 questions, of which at least 16 has to be answered correctly. After passing all the tests, a commercial license permit is issued where the driver can now train along with a CDL license holder in a commercial vehicle over the road. The trainee must wait a minimum of 14 days before going back to take the actual driving portion of the test. Being a trainee here at Peoria Charter, the company will actually provide the trainee with a trainer and a bus in order to pass the driving portion. If all goes well, the new trainee will now have a valid CDL but we're not finished yet. The trainee will then spend several weeks driving an empty coach around with an instructor to mock charter destinations where their ability to plot routes to different destinations, negotiate turns and maneuvers, endurance of long drives, safety and risk assessment, and customer service skills are put to the test. Along with road training, drivers are also trained on electronic logging, company protocols, guidelines, and familiarization with our in-house dispatching system so that they know how to receive their trip assignments as well as fill out pay sheets. Also during this time period, trainees will be expected to spend several days doing several ride-alongs on our daily line runs. If all goes well, the driver is now given a letter of intent and sent back to the DMV to take one more exam for their charter bus endorsement. This written exam consists of 16 questions, 12 of which have to be answered correctly to pass. Once passed, the driver will now be legally certified to operate a commercial motor coach to transport passengers on their own, as well as a certified Peoria Charter Coach operator. At this point, the driver will be issued uniforms, keys, a company ID badge, and their name input into the system so that dispatch can begin sending them on their new adventures behind the wheel of a Peoria Charter Coach. New drivers are usually dispatched on multi-coach trips so that they can follow a lead driver to help them get acclimated to transporting actual busloads of passengers. Keep in mind that depending on the state and the bus company, some of these steps and requirements may be completely different than what I described here in this video. Every motor coach company kind of do things differently and every state kind of varies on what they require. Now, for all of you watching this video out there, I would love to hear from all of you either down in the comment below or on Motor Coach World's new Facebook page regarding several things mentioned in today's topic. For one, if you have experienced both careers as a motor coach operator and as a semi-truck driver, which one did you prefer and why? And secondly, for all the motor coach operators out there, what was the training like in the company you worked in? Was it similar to what I described in Peoria Charters training? And finally, I know everyone in the motor coach industry is hurting right now for drivers. Please feel free to use this video as well as another video I made a few months back on what it's like to be a motor coach operator to all of your local media sources to get the word out about our industry. You just never know who you might entice into coming on board as a new motor coach operator. Now again, keep in mind that the way I describe how things work in my company may be very different from how your company pays and trains and operates. That's why I encourage all of you viewers to write your perspectives and ways of operating down in the comments below. I also encourage all the viewers to read the people's comments if you're curious on how each motor coach company does their things their way. So folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you did. If you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world. Oh,